horror story that Risa Tisa has can happen to you very easily. You just as quickly as Risa Tisa can fall into the trap of falling for the wrong man. Now, obviously, there's so many factors that went into Risa Tisa's story and so many red flags and things that she wasn't sure about or wasn't thinking about or wasn't aware of. Of course, I'm not saying that, say, everything that happened to Risa Tisa is her fault. Um, for those of you guys who don't know Risa Tisa, you should go search her up after this. Risa, Risa Tisa, who the fuck did I marry? It's like the just a whole girl that went through this whole situation with the guy she was married to, and he's a pathological liar. My point being is what happened to Risa Tisa can happen to you as well. If you don't do the job of asking the right questions, right? Vetting the people that you're in a relationship with. I know people can lie. I know people can manipulate you. I know people can um, say things to deceive you. I'm not saying that it was a perfect technique. I just want you to understand you can find yourself in a similar position if you don't do the job of giving people time to show you who they truly are through action and consistency of those actions, right? You need to be asking questions about exes. You need to be asking questions about past relationships. You need to be getting answers on who they are, where they've been, what they're about, and you need to be getting confirmation through their actions if those things are in line, right? And as things show you that they're not in line, you need to be asking more questions. You need to be doing the job of um, taking a step back and analyzing the situation. Do not just accept someone's words as their words. And obviously, Risa Tisa got to the point where she's at because she asked more questions as time went on and she did more research and she started figuring some things out. But what I'm saying to you is you can also do that in the process of getting to know someone, in the process of dating someone, in the process of talking to someone where you don't actually have to give your body to them, give your spirit to them, give your mind to them before you realize this isn't the person for you because even in the even let's even say someone completely is an utter just super liar right let's just say that and they tell you everything you want to hear so you can't realize that they're tricking you about a bunch of stuff when you give it some time this is why i say action and consistency of those actions because that will take time that's not something that nobody can show you consistency in a day they can't show you consistency in a week. They can't show you consistency in two or three weeks or a couple months, okay? People show you consistency over a long period of time, okay? And I say that to say, right, as you allow someone to show you consistency and they're a liar or they're deceiving you, you will begin to notice inconsistencies. And as you notice these inconsistencies, that should tell you there is more to explore and research and you should not be head over heels jumping yourself into a situation when you're realizing there is quite a bit of inconsistencies All right and like i say i'm not saying that what happened to risa tisa is risa tisa's fault i'm not saying that the man that she was with wasn't a pathological liar or anything like that what I am saying is you can easily find yourself in a similar situation if you are not doing the job of allowing the people that you meet to show you who they are through their actions and the consistency of those actions. You can also find yourself in a position like that if you're not doing the job of investing in yourself, realizing what you want for yourself, realizing what your goals are, realizing the type of relationship that you want, right? Doing the job of actually knowing what that is that you want and you need so that when you go into these relationships, you can quickly identify if someone is either doing things, saying things, or acting in a particular way that is not in line with the type of relationship that you want to be having, right? Because what happens is when you don't know what you want, when you don't know what relationship you want to have, right? You string yourself along by hoping Someone will show you that. Okay. And when you're hoping that someone will show you that instead of analyzing if they are that person or not that person, you will string yourself along because you will naturally want to believe the lies that they tell you because you're hoping that they will show you something that you can believe in. Do you see how that works? When you come in with the mindset of already knowing what it is you want out of the relationship, you will know if it is not that. 
And it'll be very easy for you to take a step back and stop investing your time and energy into someone or something that is not in line with what you want for yourself. You see how that works? But if you don't know that, and you're hoping that that man will show you that, you will constantly find yourself wanting to believe his lies, wanting to believe his inconsistencies, wanting to justify his actions, and you will continuously invest your time and energy, hoping that one day he will show you the things that you don't even really know what they are yet. You just hope that they somehow exist in this world or place where they will be shown to you. And in the process of them being shown to you, you'll realize that that's what you needed. You'll be a jumbled up mess until you spent years of your life invested into someone who is not who you thought they were. Now, obviously, like I say, not everyone's going to end up like Risa Tisa and her story is extreme in circumstance. And I haven't even listened to everything that her story consisted of because it's a really long story. But the idea and the concept is the same. Right. And like I said, not everything that recent that happened to Risa Tisa is her fault. I would not, I'm not saying that whatsoever, but I am saying it's easy to find yourself in that type of situation when you're not thinking about what do I want for myself? And am I investing my time and energy with people who are consistent or aligned with what I want for myself in my relationships? Because at the very beginning, you'll start to have the answer to that question being no. And you, you'll immediately know this is not someone I should be investing my time and energy into. This is not even someone I should be giving my body, mind, and soul and spirit to. Right? I know some of you guys don't know who Risa Tisa is, but after this, I'm sure you'll do some research and figure out her whole story. Right? But the story is not really the what I'm trying to talk about here. Right? The concept is what I'm trying to address. Right. The concept of meeting someone and wanting to believe in them, wanting to believe that they can show you something, show you what your dream life is without actually you knowing what your dream life is. And so you constantly find yourself in a situation where even though the inconsistencies don't make sense, even though the actions don't make sense, even though things don't feel aligned, you're constantly having hope that they will eventually show themselves to you rather than knowing that they're if they're present or not and not wasting your time invested into a situation that doesn't serve you snow said fantasies or realities exactly right and you can find yourself especially 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 at the beginning buying into a fantasy rather than seeing the reality because at the beginning when you don't know someone and they start off with a blank slate. They don't have all this trauma that they've put on you or experiences that they've had with you that will make you bitter or give you a bad taste in your mouth about them. You want to believe in them and the person that they are and believe that they're pure hearted and good and amazing and awesome and uh, have all this, the good intention. You want to believe that at the very beginning. So as they show you those inconsistencies, you want to give them excuses. You want it not to be true. And you want to be able to continue investing yourself in this person, despite them not being exactly what you think they should be or what they sh think, what you think they should be showing you. Right. That's the whole crux of what went on with the Risa Tisa story. As time went on, she continued to see the in inconsistencies in what her man was telling her or showing her um, in the relationship. But I promise you, I promise you, no matter what the situation, and, and like I said, I'm not saying it's all her fault, but no matter what the situation, I promise you, those signs also existed when she first met him. It, it They didn't just start after she married him. Those inconsistencies, that lack of um, um, proper alignment between his words and his actions and the person he is and the relationships he's had and where he's been, all that stuff. I promise you, those things all existed before she even had sex with him. Before When she first started dating him, within the first two or three weeks. And I promise you, and I haven't even, like I said, I haven't looked back and gone through her entire story, but I promise you, if she ever were to tell you guys the story of everything that transpired, even before she met him, she would tell you that there were some inconsistencies even before she became so invested that they were married. 
And there was a lot of red flags even before she became that invested. SH says she married him too fast. Like I said, I don't know the full situation, but if she did marry him too fast, and like I said, this is not about judging Risa Tisa. It's not about judging her mistakes. We all make mistakes. I've made mistakes. I've been bamboozled by people before. It's not all her fault or anything like that. I just want you guys to understand the concept, right? I guess SH has watched it and she said they moved in really quickly. And uh, sorry, they they she got married too soon and they moved in very soon, right? What what is it? Notice how I haven't even listened to her whole story, but yet I I understand the concepts and and the likely ways that she went wrong. That should tell you it's a similar root of the problem. Do you see what I'm saying here? That was actually a perfect example, right? Right? In that even her situation in being extreme. I can extract what is likely the root of the problem. I'm not saying that to say, oh, I'm an amazing person. I know everything. I'm just saying that to say when the root of the problem is similar, you can also analyze in yourself and your own life what the root of the problem is and identify how to fix or adjust that so that you don't find yourself in a similar situation, right? There's ways to address things like that. And like SH said, she got married too soon and they moved in really quickly. And what do I talk about, right? Disney princess syndrome, love bombing, allowing someone, wanting to believe that someone is going to come knocking on your door. Hey, I'm Prince Charming and I'm here to save your life and take you on a wild, wild adventure and show you everything that you need to know. Just trust me, right? Wanting to believe that that, that will happen for you. And when a big guy begins to tell you, oh, you're so beautiful, girl. Yo, I love you so much, yo. Your ass is so fat. Look how you look in them jeans, girl. Oh my God, look how you look in that sundress, yo. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever met. I want to marry you. I want to have your kids. I want to just, I want to do everything with you. I want I want, I want to take you on adventures. I want to take you on trips. I know I just met you, but I, I want you to be my wife. I, I, knew, I knew from the second I met you when I watched you walk down, you know, the street. And them jeans, girl, I just knew as soon as I seen you, I knew that you would be the perfect mother to my children. That's how I knew by the way you walked. I knew you'd be the mother to my children. How, how would you how would you know that exactly? Because me mothering your children doesn't consist of how fat my ass is. Hmm. How, how would you how, how does that work? You know, but you don't want to think like that. You just want to believe. I am a princess. I am amazing. I am awesome. I am like, you know, I'm like a fairy tale. Like, look at me. I'm like a walking goddess and he recognizes how much of a goddess I am. So that's why he's telling me I'm a goddess because I am a goddess. And so it makes sense that he sees the goddess in me and he realizes that my goddess persona is a reason to be a mother to his children. N no, 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 that's not it. What he's doing is he's trying to get you emotional about the situation so that you stop looking for inconsistencies in his stories or in his lifestyle or any red flags. And you're just, you're so over the moon about how amazing you are and how much he loves you and how much he wants to make you the mother of his children, right? It's almost like um, he's trying to give you like a constant mind orgasm, right? Because feeding your ego with all that stuff about how amazing and awesome you are and how you're the best and stuff like, it's like a mind orgasm. He's just filling your, feeding your ego constantly, right? It's selling you a dream constantly. And you're like, oh, like, like imagine if I tried to tell you, hey, uh, can you do calculus for me while you're having an orgasm? Can you like solve this uh, math equation uh, or Pythagorean theorem while you're having an orgasm. You know what I mean? Like in the middle of having an orgasm, you'd be like, oh, that's impossible. While I'm having an orgasm, I can't focus on anything else. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Right. It's the same concept, right? He's trying to get your emotions so heightened. You in a place where you're just, oh my God, this is so amazing. You, you can't even think straight. You can't even see things that are right in front of you. Right. It's impossible. Because you're just in this, oh, in this phase and it's just everything just feels good. You're having like this mental just uh, experience and just everything is just uh, so, so much pleasure, right? And you can't identify when he's literally like, you're so amazing, yo. I want you to be my wife. Then he turns around and he's like, you know, cheating on you. Then he comes back around. But, you know, I just I want you to be my wife. Yeah, I want you to be the mother of my child. And you're just like, while he's cheating on you in the other room, you're like over the moon. You're like having this mental um breakdown and just overjoyed because of how amazing he said you are right 